Hi, I'm Mark D'Onofrio, defensive coordinator and linebacker coach for the Temple Owls. Today, we're going to introduce you to linebacker fundamentals the Temple way. With today's offense is running the spread game, it is more important than ever that linebackers are adept at defending the run and the pass. Our drills will show you how to do them accordingly. Let's take a look. The first individual drill we perform on a daily basis is a series of pass reaction drills. The first segment is what we call hips. Coach or player will direct linebacker straight back and then instruct player to open his hips in the direction of his command. Coaching point is for linebacker to open hips from left and right and back while staying on the yard line he is aligned on. After three direction changes, coach or player will put ball high to simulate a throw and linebacker will break downhill. In this example, we are using a player as the coach. We teach our players at Temple that there are, these are drills that they can do year round, in season or out of season, when a coach is around or not. It's important to instruct this to your players as well so they realize they can work on their skills year round. Number 41 is directing number 40 back, gives him a directional to his right, linebacker's left, and number 40 staying tight on the line as he works back. Ball is high to simulate a throw. Number 40 wants to stick his foot in the ground, his plant foot, and then drive off the next step, which is his dry foot. Okay, in this case, we don't want a bucket step, which would mean his second foot goes in the ground behind his original plant foot. So we want to plant, point, and burst. Plant, point our toe going forward, and burst. Catch the ball. As always, secure it high and tight so that we don't give it back to the offense. Again, plant, point, and burst. Number 56 is planting with his left foot. He's going to point forward with his right foot right down the line. Catch the ball, secure it high and tight. Okay, again, we want to stay on the line. Number 41 plants with his left foot, points with his right foot right down the line. Okay, catch every ball. Again, we can do this drill with multiple players. All three players right now are reading the coach in the middle for direction changes, and we use additional throwers in each line so that everybody can catch more balls. We drill this early, gives our players an opportunity to catch more balls than most linebackers do in drills. That way, when they have an opportunity to make an interception, they can make the play and are not surprised by catching the ball. Again, the coaching point is to stay tight on that line, and that's why we drill it right on the yard lines. Plant, point, and burst back at the target. Catch the ball, secure it high and tight. After each player has performed a rep of hips, our second segment of our pass reaction drills is what we call 45 and retrace. We want our player to open at a 45 degree angle, simulating the end of a hook to curl or curl flat drop. We want to teach our players to react where core QB is looking and where front shoulder is pointed. The first movement by coach simulates pass. The second movement is directional in 45 degree angle and we will break players out or to QB's throwing hand. After one rep of 45, we will work retrace. Linebackers open to their left and retrace on quarterback's eyes and shoulders. Example number one. QB pulling the ball up simulates pass in the start of the drill. Linebackers will open to quarterback's right. When quarterback turns his shoulders or looks in that direction, linebackers will stick a foot in the ground, plant, point, and burst, and gain positive yards back to the quarterback, catch the ball breaking downhill. Great job here of number 58 extending his arms and catching the ball away from his body, and then tucking it away high and tight and securing the ball. Here we are again with multiple quarterbacks doing the same drill. Okay, Give the linebackers a direction, tell them to open to their left, and again, it's best if done early here to the quarterback's throwing arm. Quarterback is looking outside, breaks them on the ball. Great job here by number 53 to the right of your screen. Plant, point, and burst. Six a foot in the ground, his next step is positive, and he breaks that downhill. Almost catches the ball at the sideline here. Number 43, never plants, points, or bursts. Number 43 is working too far uh, to the sideline and too lateral. Needs to come back to the ball.
Next group. Okay, good job by the middle defender. Sticks a foot in the ground, gains ground back to the ball. Other players are too lateral right now in their drop, not gaining enough ground and uh, enough positive ground back to the quarterback. Okay, after we've completed 45, now we'll work on retrace. Again, the quarterback will open them to their left or to his throwing arm, and now with a sharp movement, okay, we'll change the direction he's looking by his eyes and his shoulder, teaching the players to retrace and break downhill. Catch the ball, tuck it away for ball security purposes, high and tight. Here we are again. Okay, good job by uh, linebacker on the right, number 56. He plants with his left foot, gains po positive yardage with his right foot, and retraces. Okay, here's the same drill done with three defenders and three quarterbacks. Again, the quarterback in the middle, they're all eyeing him up. He looks to his right. They set up. Quick shoulder movement and head turn, opposite, plant and retrace. This teaches linebackers to react to the quarterback and get their vision on the quarterback. At Temple, we talk about having ping pong eyes. They always have to have a feel for the receiver in zone coverage, but they want to get their eyes back and forth between the quarterback and the receiver, simulating if they were watching a ping pong game with the ball going back and forth. That's 45 and retrace. The third and final phase of our pass reaction drills is called three-step. We are teaching linebackers to react to the quarterback's three-step drop, which will result in quick throws such as slants. A quarterback will stand up straight on snap and hold ball high on a three-step pass. We teach our linebackers to recognize this and break flat, or what we call radar, to the throwing lane and receiver. In this case, we are using one of our linebackers as the quarterback. Again, these are drills that our players should do all year. Therefore, we want our, all of our players to be able to simulate most of our drills in order for players to work on these year-round. In this case, the quarterback is showing the ball high to represent three-step pass. Our linebackers are now breaking flat without gaining any ground, Okay, and they're ready to try to get in the throwing lane and intercept the ball or put a hit on the receiver. Again, same coaching points. Catch the ball with arms extended. Okay, number 56 is letting it get to his body, high and tight. Again, a quarterback's up, up and high, overemphasizing the three-step drop. Linebackers buzzing their feet and reacting flat. Good job here. And again, on any interception, okay, we want to teach our guys to catch the ball or any break, plant, point, and burst. Okay, we do not want to keep getting whiff. We want to stick our foot in the ground and get north as fast as we can. Make positive steps. Okay, good job catching the ball with hands extended. And again, these drills will help your players make plays in the game. If they're continually doing this every day and catching dramatically more balls than any linebacker in the country, okay, your linebackers will end up with interceptions. Again, I want to emphasize these are drills that players can use year round. All they need is a football and a buddy. All it takes is two to get out there and, and uh, take turns and get this done. They can get their hands better. They can get their drops better. They can get their pass reactions better. All right, so here we are in the helmets phase of our early practice in spring. Okay, good job here by number 32. Breaking flat, catches the ball, proper ball security, high and tight, sticks a foot in the ground, looks to get north and finish the drill. Okay, again, Three-step is characterized by quarterback being high, the ball being high, and the quarterback looking in that direction. Okay. Okay, make sure we are breaking uh, guys to both the right and the left. And again, that's our final phase of our pass reaction drills at Temple. Our second individual drill is what we call stance and start. This is the most important drill we do. Proper stance and footwork allow linebackers to close ground quicker and ultimately make more plays. At Temple, we teach our linebackers to have four components in their stance. First off, their feet will be shoulder width apart. Second, we'd like their knees to point slightly in, more like linebacker number 41 on the right than number 40 on the left. In addition, we will ask them to keep their upper body relaxed and keep their lower body tense. We want the weight on the balls of their feet and want them to feel pressure on their big toe. 
we can drill the stance and start in several ways. Okay, the first way is how we teach young linebackers not to fall step. We'll place an agile bag at their heels to make them conscious of the fact that we don't want them to fall step. Behind them, the other linebackers will coach the position. They will look for the blue bag movement. If that bag moves, it indicates that the linebacker created a false step. In this case, we'll use a coach or another linebacker. Again, these are drills that players can do year round, so we'll show it to you here on the video. Number 53 right now is going to give a direction either to the right or left, forward or fast on the outside. If he comes forward, we call that a direct read at Temple. If he turns his shoulders to the outside, we'll call that a fast read. In the stance and start drill, we'll ask our linebackers to react both ways. In this case, here is a direct read. Number 53 starts downhill towards our backers. Number, 50, number 41 will mirror his steps with a short six inch step, getting a second foot in the ground. Notice the linebackers are not false stepping, leading with their eyes, hands, and hips, feet last. Eyes, hands, hips, feet. If the feet are last, they will follow everything else. Number 40 starts downhill, has his feet on the ground, quick, short, choppy steps. The linebackers are in good position with their knees bent. Another direct read now with two new linebackers. Number 58 on your right, takes a short 45 uh, degree step downhill. Good position, good base. Mirroring the steps of the tailback. In this case, we have what we call a fast read, which represents an outside play, perimeter play, toss. In that case, we'll ask the linebacker closest to the fast read to get downhill and enter. We want him to enter, similar to our fast read drill, which you'll see later on. Enter to keep no cutback lanes and keep the ball going to the sideline. Number 58 will start slightly downhill, and then he will be fast and gradually press the line of scrimmage and come over the top of the first linebacker. This, is, this allows us to drill the stance and the start as well as the direction and intent of the play. Another fast read here, number 40 will enter. So there's no cutback lane and number 41 will run over the top. That's our stance and start drill. The second part of stance and start is stance and start with a sled explode. We are teaching linebackers to play downhill with no false steps and take on blocks with power. We want to attack the sled or blocker with hands inside and thumbs up. Our elbows are tight to the body, rubbing our ribs with our elbows. Coach can use a whistle or command to signal the linebacker's start. On contact, the coach should count 1,001, 1,002, and then give a command of go or blow a whistle to alert the linebacker to disengage at that point. We are trying to teach the linebackers to strain longer than they think on blocks. Good job here by linebacker number 21. Out of his stance, no false step. Elbows are tight to his body, his thumbs are up, controlling the sled, and then we want to violently disengage by bringing our back arm through. We'd like to move our feet laterally here by moving our back foot, in this case his right foot, first to get outside the framework of the sled, which is simulating our blocker. Good job here by linebacker number 33. Elbows tight to the body, thumbs up, violent disengage with the back arm. That's our stance and start with sled explode. Our next drill we perform is a drill we call triple shed. Triple shed teaches linebackers to defeat both high and low blocks while moving laterally. In addition, triple shed is a good drill to teach linebackers how to defeat leverage blocks, blocks where the offensive player has defender pinned by angle. Linebackers must stay square and do not give the blocker a surface to hit. Linebacker cannot take the path of least resistance, meaning going underneath the block. They must learn to beat down blocks over the top. If pin, be prepared to drop step with outside leg and rip and run. When playing the low block, we emphasize bending at your knees, not at your waist, staying square, and defeating the block with two eyes and two hands, meaning seeing your hands hit the crown of the helmet. Give ground on contact, 
slide, push, and give a step, and regain ground as you approach the next blocker. The coach will signal to the three blockers high, low, or high blocks. In this case, the first blocker is giving a low block. Linebacker must look this block in with two eyes and two hands and push give a step on the crown of the helmet. In this case, the inside linebacker is swatting the back of the helmet. He will be cut every time if he performs this drill this way. The second blocker is coming on a high block. This is where after pushing and giving a step, he wants to regain ground and attack blocker inside out. With face and hands, strike the blocker, get him off you, and be ready to play the next block. We will finish the drill with an angle tackle by sticking a foot in the ground, plant, point, and burst to your target, finish on the ball carrier for five yards. Hand placement on the, for the linebacker here is too high. He wants to be able to go low to high, rub his ribs with his elbows and his thumbs up for block destruction. Good job pushing and giving a step. Elbows are tight on the club and base in the angle tackle. This drill is being performed in helmets, utilizing shields in the early phases of our spring and summer drills. As we get into training camp, we can then move on to full pads and perform the same drill. Excellent technique here by linebacker number 56. Looks in the low block with two eyes and two hands, stopping the blocker's charge by touching the crown of the helmet. Push and give a step and regain the ground as he approaches the second blocker. Quick hands while knees are bent, beat blocker number three on the low block by pushing and giving a step on the crown of the helmet and finishing with an angle tackle. As we move into the season, drill, drill can become more physical while adding pads. Excellent job here by the linebacker staying square with his knees bent. As you can see, blocker number two has an angle on him. Drop step, beats the low block, finish with an angle tackle. Great job on the low block, looking it in with two eyes and two hands. Physical shed on blocker number two and three who have angles on linebacker. Drop step and pull, excellent angle tackle, club and base, take them back five yards north. Make sure you rotate the drill both to the left side and the right side so linebacker gets used to taking on blocks in both directions. In this case, linebacker number two does not look in the low block and touch the crown of the helmet. His hands are on the back of the helmet and his knees are, are straight as opposed to bent. He will be cut every time if he puts himself in this position. Nice shed of the high block, drop step, angle tackle. And that is our triple shed drill at Temple. Our next individual drill is a drill we call the fast read drill. The design of the drill is to teach linebackers proper techniques on fast reads or outside runs. It is important that once recognizing outside run that our linebackers run. We tell him if you see the tailback and he is running, you're running. We want to get our eyes out front to the end man on the line of scrimmage Okay, and be alert to a crack or seal block from the tight end. We want to gradually press the line of scrimmage, having great pad level. We must beat interior blockers or running back to the line of scrimmage, or what we call beat them to the spot. We want to fit all blocks inside out so that we ensure there are no cutback lanes. We do this by what we call entering the offense on their side of the line of scrimmage inside out. First linebacker, number 58, beats the pulling guard to the spot before he can get his toes up the field. This ensures that we will hit a much bigger offensive lineman on his side of the line of scrimmage without getting his weight going towards us. By entering inside out, 
we ensure there are no cutback lanes and we force the ball to go east-west rather than north-south. The next linebacker is responsible to do what we call run and rip. He wants to run fast okay, and mirror the path of the tailback and be ready to, for the next cutoff block from the offensive lineman. In order to beat this block, we must rip our backside arm through violently and finish with our toes up the field outside the front side inside linebacker. Number 40 beats front side guard to the spot, enters with his face in his hands. Number 56 backside will run and rip, rip his backside arm through and finish with his toes up the field. Again, we want to keep everything tight. The front side linebacker will enter tight. The next linebacker will be tight next to him to continue to force the ball to the sideline. Front side linebacker number 40 enters. Backside linebacker number 58 is going to run and rip. Rip the backside arm through and be ready to finish with their toes up the field. No separation between number 40 and number 58. Therefore, no cutback lanes. That's our fast read drill. Our next drill is a drill we call jam and reroute. The purpose of this drill is to teach linebackers to jam and reroute receivers who enter their zone while keeping square with vision on the quarterback. Instruct the linebacker to jam the receiver with his eyes in his hands, and then return eyes quickly to the quarterback. Linebacker should make contact with the near shoulder of receiver and extend his arms as his body is up on receiver's body. Teach the linebackers to roll to the hole if the receiver bends behind us. In this picture, our linebacker has his inside foot up, outside foot back, with vision on the quarterback. Our jam should occur between seven and nine yards, and we'd like a reroute of about three yards. In this case, the receiver is trying to enter the zone on a vertical, and we want to reroute him off his course to buy time for the safety. With vision on the quarterback, we can see the break of the ball, go get it at the highest point, tuck it away, securely and return for an interception. In this example, receiver has rerouted himself, running away from the linebacker. In that event, we don't want to chase him and get our body too square to receiver and lose vision on the quarterback. We will roll back inside or roll to the hole, running the route for the receiver in order to make it a high throw by the quarterback. Again, the buy time for a safety or make an interception ourselves. In this example, the linebacker on the right side of your screen, number 46, gets his eyes too heavy on the receiver and not enough concentration on the quarterback. This is something you must drill with young linebackers to give them confidence to see the man and return eyes quickly back to the quarterback several times. Better job here by number 40. keeping his eyes on the quarterback and understanding where the man is. Notice the jam and reroute with vision still on the quarterback. This will allow him to break on underneath throws or break on a throw in his zone. Secure the ball, tuck it away, high and tight, finish the play. That's our jam and reroute drill. Our next drill is a drill that we call angle intercept. The area of emphasis here is teaching linebackers to get depth before width on their pass drop. Too many young players get caught up by the quarterback and neither get depth or get too much width on their pass drops, opening up throwing lanes. First, linebacker wants to flash his eyes outside to first threat to our zone. Drive for width and return our eyes back to the QB. Our final position is 10 to 12 yards deep, square, with our feet buzzing and reading the quarterback's front shoulder and eyes. We will melt, meaning move in that direction where the QB is looking laterally, but break downhill and gain ground back towards the quarterback when his long arm comes off the ball. In this example, number 41 gets to about 11 yards deep, picks an initial spot and gets his eyes back to the quarterback. The quarterback's shoulder is looking to defender's right. He will melt in that direction and wants to gain ground back downhill as the ball is thrown. tuck the ball away and score. 
Our inside linebacker here sets up on the quarterback. Again, quarterback is looking in a different direction. He will start to melt laterally and gains back almost five yards on his break. Performs the angle interception. It is important that we make positive steps gaining ground when we break to eliminate yards after the catch. Excellent job by number 41, picking his landmark, getting set up on the quarterback. Quarterback shoulder is to his outside left. He melts in that direction, plants, points, and bursts, and makes up four or five yards on the break. Secures the interception, high and tight, and scores. These are drills that are being performed by our players right here at Temple. And the reason we included them in shirts and shorts and without a coach is because we encourage our guys to do many of our drills on their own year round whenever they can. They're simple drills to execute, but the techniques will last the season and will make them the best linebackers they can be. Great job at gaining ground, going and getting the ball at the highest point, and tucking the ball away high and tight. It's important to remind defenders when they become interceptors and we now have the ball that they tuck it away high and tight and not give it back to the offense. Here's our drill in a practice session. Notice number 40 picks his landmark, looks for his first threat, and gets his eyes back to the quarterback. We refer to this technique as what we call ping pong eyes. We want to imagine that the linebacker is watching a ping pong game with his head going back and forth between the man and the quarterback. He's melting to his right on the quarterback's shoulder, performs the angle interception, sticks a foot in the ground, high and tight, and scores. In this picture, you can see two linebackers performing the drill. One coach will demonstrate the start of the drill, both linebackers reading that one coach, and you can add additional throwers so that every receiver catches a ball. To turn angle intercept into a competitive drill, we can put two linebackers hip to hip and backpedal them on the snap. They will read the quarterback's shoulders, and the front side defender will become the offensive player, and the back side defender will become the defensive player. In this case, the defensive player beats the offensive player to the ball and almost performs an interception, but the offensive player fights for a strip. This will teach our players to be competitive in pass situations and not allow balls to be thrown in their zone. We want to defend any ball that's thrown in our zone the same way we would defend a run, force an incompletion. And that's our angle intercept drill.